My name is Kathy, and I am here with my son Nicholas, who is 11. So when Nicholas was a baby, we noticed that things weren't quite the same as with his older sisters. He's a very, very sweet and loving boy, but was nonverbal and struggled to hear us, struggled to respond to us, even receptively, not just, he was nonverbal, but he didn't even hear us talking, so there was very little response. He couldn't get himself dressed, he didn't, he didn't know how to do anything. He was just in this world of his own, sweet, not unhappy, but just on his own little island. And it was hard because we couldn't really reach him. And we're able to get a diagnosis about 18, 20 months, and he was diagnosed with autism. So, of course, we started occupational therapy and speech therapy and PT and all those kinds of things. And he made progress, of course, because therapies help. We were just on our very long marathon journey trying to help him be the best that he could be. Our journey with stem cells began because someone approached us to talk to us about it. A doctor in uh, our hometown was doing his own research and he wanted to share what he had learned. And so we just started reading books and looking at the internet and trying to talk to as many people as we could. But uh, it's because this person came forward and told us about Panama in particular. He had already looked at the lab and the clinic. He had been here himself and really felt like it was a safe option. It was probably one of the best in the world, he said. So we felt really comfortable with the decision to choose to come to Panama. We were faced with this option of flying to a foreign country. The fear of the unknown is always present, but there's also that fear of if we don't try, what, what, are, what are we missing? And we didn't want to miss an opportunity, especially at a young age, we wanted to go forward and see what could happen. After the first round of stem cells, we have seen Nicholas. All I can say is he, he woke up. He suddenly could hear me. He could look at me. He could understand me. He still wasn't conversational, but he felt more alive than he had ever been. As the years, his language is growing so much, tremendously. He can put sentences, whole, whole words together to make a sentence. He can tell me if something hurts. He can tell me if something is funny. He can tell me if he's happy. So much more expressive with his language and that definitely grew after stem cells. So that was a real gift. We feel like that was a very specific objective gift that was very clear to us. It is beautiful as a parent to see your child wake up and know that he has all this beautiful stuff inside and now he's able to enjoy the world around him, not be overwhelmed by the world around him. It, it's freedom for him and it's freedom for us. We, as parents of autistic children, obviously worry about long-term and it's beautiful to know that he is making advances. So choosing to do stem cells was also part of that to try to help him be more independent and more aware and be able to advocate for himself and let, give him his own voice. Every year when we're done, we ask Nicholas if he wants to go back to Panama next year, and he undoubtedly says yes. He enjoys it here, he enjoys the staff. They are incredible, they are funny, they understand the children. He loves meeting the other people at the pool. 
He loves going on adventures with the drivers and having monkeys eat out of his hands. He loves coming and that is a testament to the Simstel Institute because they create an environment that kids want to come back because everybody around here is smiling and encouraging and happy. I think every family is looking for hope and they are looking for something that will happen. We could tell that Nicholas wasn't broken, he just was trapped. And so for us, we felt like stem cells were gonna be, we would hope, we had hoped that that would open him up. And so we wanted to make him the best that he could be and have his best life.